Hello and welcome to this live video. I am Karen Lockholp. I um, host a website called WeTurnedOutOK.com and I have a podcast also called We Turned Out OK, which is why you see this lovely microphone here because I'm recording this. My plan is to um, record it live here for you. And um, if you're here live, that's awesome. Um, I'm asking if you would like, you could put some um, questions into the chat. We we're talking all about coronavirus, um, COVID-19 and um, how to talk to your kids about it. and uh, I'm excited to dive into that. I just want to um, give people a moment or two to join. So um, while we are getting started, I will just say, yeah, that I'm recording this. Uh, my plan is to is to record it live and then um, post it as a podcast a little later in the week. So that like a, basically a bonus episode, because I think that there is such a panic and worry around coronavirus right now, um, even even among kids, um, among adults. Yes, I mean we 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 have a lot of things that we could be worrying about, right, that have to do with coronavirus or COVID-19. Um, but kids are hearing things from their friends and, and things that even if they were said um, in a way that, like sometimes kids will hear things and they will interpret them mistakenly. And um, so I wanna help you be able to talk with your kids about coronavirus, be able to um, help them feel safe and, um, and hopefully uh, help you kind of know what to do. Um, I am, I guess the first thing I'd better say is that I am not a doctor, I am a child development expert. So we're gonna be focusing here on, um, on how to help kids feel safe and how to keep kids safe and how to keep ourselves and family safe, right? But I'm only gonna talk in general terms about coronavirus itself. Um, I am gonna, I'm gonna provide a whole bunch of links. Um, as soon as I'm done recording, I'm gonna post them into the, uh, into the notes just below this episode. So uh, whether you are watching it in YouTube or you are, um, you know, listening in some other way, uh, like for example, on the podcast, there will be these, the links for you. And I've actually, so I, I know a lot of people who are um, very well connected, either doctors or nurses or um, early childhood education specialists or both <laughs> medical ethicists. I mean, I, I'm really, really excited. So doing this podcast for five years has helped, almost five years, it'll be five years in May, has helped me meet some incredible, incredible people um, who know a lot about all of the above, how to, how to help you, um, raise kids happily, right? Keep them happy as well, but also how to feel safe when something major is going on. And I'm really happy, um, for, you know, for a lot of reasons, it, it feels so good to be able to call on those people when there's an issue that comes up. And, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to share several links. Um, and I, I won't even, Probably, like I will tell you about them as they come up, but um, the the one I'm going to reference first of all is um, I'm going to provide the link to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, because that is where you'll be able to get the most accurate information about what's going on with coronavirus. Actually, the other place is um, there's a that's I think where you're going to be able to get the most accurate information regarding you know the spread in, in the U.S. Um, most of you watching will be from the U.S. Uh, or Canada, and so I wanted to um, make sure to have that. There's also a great article that I read, um, got a lot of good information about from the BBC, and um, that had to do with with the, with the the kind of statistical analysis of who is most likely to get coronavirus, who is most likely to um, you know to to get sick from it, to be hospitalized from it, um, broken down by like age, gender. Um, if you've already got any diseases, you know, other like, so if you're talking about somebody with heart disease, they might have a little bit more risk than somebody without that. And um, I'm gonna include that, but I'm not gonna talk about it here because that's really not my purview. I wanna send you to the experts for that. So, um, so yes, uh, coronavirus, um, well, it, which it's called COVID-19 when it, when, it, uh, when it presents as a disease, the coronavirus is the virus that causes the disease. So um, as I said before, this is really, I'm, I'm anticipating that a lot of you watching will be from the US. And in the US so far, there are very minimally few cases of, of uh, COVID-19 that, um, that have been determined and found. It's, it's, you know, elsewhere in the world, there are more cases of this. And, um, you know, I think at the same time as, I think my heart goes out to those countries where, where this is a, a bigger 
um, a bigger issue right now. Um, and I am confident that the people in those countries, just like in the US, are, are getting help and um, that there are helpers everywhere. Look to the helpers is something that Mr. Rogers always says. Um, and important that we prepare instead of panicking. And um, one of the other uh, articles I will link to is a cool mom picks article. Um, and part of the part of the title of that is not panicking, just preparing. And so that's really what I want to help you do today. Um, as I said, uh, coronavirus or, or COVID-19 has only been uh, determined to have found uh, to be in just a very few people, like 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 a minuscule amount of people in the U.S. Um, the flu is orders of magnitude larger uh, in terms of the, the people that um, are getting the flu in the United States. Um, it, it's, it's so much more common. Um, and the, the interesting and cool thing is that doing stuff to protect ourselves from coronavirus also helps protect from the flu. Um, they are both viruses, so they, are, they cannot be, um, there's no antibiotics that will help. I, antibiotics help with bacterial infections. A virus is something that um, is a little bit different. So, so antibiotics won't help, but but there are some things that will help, um, and they are strikingly similar between the coronavirus and the flu. Um, so some of those things are um, are washing hands. Like hand washing is the most um, the the best thing that we can do to protect our kids and ourselves against the flu, to protect against coronavirus, um, to protect against other viruses is to wash our hands. And um, there are, again, I'm not going to, I'm not a, a, a doctor sort of expert. I, I, I don't want to, um, you know, lead you to think that I am, but uh, when, when you're looking at hand washing, it's important that it's warm water. It's important that um, the soap gets everywhere. We scrub under our fingernails. Um, it's important that we do it for a certain amount of time. So about 20 seconds is the recommended length for washing hands. And for little kids, that could be hard to keep them washing for that long. So singing a song like the ABCs or happy birthday, row, row your boat, you know, any of those little uh, tunes, singing them uh, a time or two while washing hands, that can help that time pass and um, make sure that they are actually washing their hands in the way that they should. Um, all that hand washing is drying everybody out, drying our hands out. So, uh, you know, having a lotion nearby is probably not a bad idea. Um, I'm trying to remember, there's a lotion that we use, I think it's called Cetaphil and I will link to it. Um, if that's in fact what it's called. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Uh, our One of our kids used to have eczema when he was very small and Cetaphil was what was recommended to us. It's it's like unscented and it, it's, 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 it lasts a really long time. It's good stuff. Um, by the way, nothing here is, I'm not an affiliate of any of this stuff. It's stuff that we have found useful or that has been recommended to us. So any products that you hear me talking about or websites, um, no affiliate links there. Just I'm just gonna give you, you know, trying to give you the best of what I have heard and seen. Um, in terms of washing hands, uh, one of our listeners recommended just the, this product that I I was very taken with. I thought this was really neat. It's called Glow Germ Gel. And what it does, it's available at Amazon. I will link to it in the show notes. Um, I'll just write that I'm gonna do that. <laughs> um, what happens is you put glow germ gel on your hands and you you kind of scrub it in. Um, you you make sure that you sort of scrape your, scrape it a little bit so it goes under your fingernails. You try to like really have it all over your hands. Um, and you can look at it under a UV light and it will um, it will show you it, it it replicates germs or it imitates germs. Like if you put them under a UV light, the 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 gel will glow so you can see where it is, where it's you know, where you have successfully put it. Um, I believe it glows bright yellow. And what you do then is you wash your hands in the way that you're supposed to, right? With the singing and the hand washing and getting under your nails and the warm water and the soap and all that stuff. And then you can put it under, you can put your hands under that, that UV light again and see where um, you you missed, if you missed any. And um, I, I haven't done it myself, but I would imagine it would be a very fun and kind of educational, interesting thing to do with kids, um, even with ourselves. I mean, I, I kind of would like to buy that product just to see like, how good am I at hand washing? Um, so that's something that you can do uh, to to help is, is washing hands. And that's a way to make it kind of fun. Um, 
the other thing that that we hear a lot is don't touch your face. So kids especially um, are very, you know, they're they they are nose pickers, right? And they have their fingers in their mouths and they th suck on thumbs and all that kind of stuff. Um, they are very good at putting their putting their hands up to their faces. But as it turns out, so are adults. So um, a, a, an email from a doctor, um, and I'm not remembering the name of the doctor right now. Um, basically said that that uh, we miss like 90% of the times that we touch our own face. Like we just don't, we just don't think about it. And so um, if our hands are clean and we're more frequently cleaning them, at least then if we touch our face, it's okay. Um, but doing all that we can to not touch our face is, is really um, a smart idea. Uh, I think it's a little bit harder to, um, to, to know and be aware of than, than we might think. So my, um, just thinking about clean hands and stuff like that, my youngest went to the PAX convention in Boston this past weekend. So if you don't know what PAX is, um, it is a basically a place where thousands of people come to play on hundreds of video game consoles. And they're all using the same, um, the same remotes and the same keyboards and the same uh, joysticks and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so this was a, you know, the coronavirus uh, was a big concern for people going to PAX. Um, the families that, that my son was going with, we all agreed that um, provided they washed their hands a lot and, and brought hand sanitizer and used it, that we would be comfortable with it. And um, there were lots and lots and lots of people there. And um, I think this is so cool. The people who run PAX made sure that every single time a new person got onto a keyboard, used a, used a joystick, used a remote, um, that it had been wiped clean with with like, um, you know, a hand sanitizer um, or a cloth filled with hand sanitizer by a by a worker. So like, you know, somebody would get up and they would wipe everything down and then the next person would sit down and it was clean for them. Um, the other thing that I thought was really funny is they um, they made sure that the um, escalator that the escalators were there was somebody standing at the beginning of the escalator to run a, a, a continually changing, like they kept changing it out, but a hand sanitizer um, cloth on the escalator at handle. So anytime somebody would grab that handle, it was just cleaned. I'm like, that is so smart. I love that. Um, we can do really, we can do really smart things to sort of, you know, keep ourselves protected. Um, oh, something that I wanted to mention um, earlier when I was kind of talking about coronavirus and COVID-19 and stuff like that. It sounds like, um, and again, I'm not a doctor. This is this is the best research that I can find. I've read this in multiple places. Um, it's it's been spoken of by by many uh, people who are in this kind of uh, research and and medical work. Um, it sounds like the the vast majority of coronavirus cases are extremely mild or are very mild. So not needing hospitalizations, not um, not getting, you know, it's, it's, it sounds like 80% of cases are, are mild, certainly compared to the flu, where um, a lot more cases of the flu are not mild. And um, so I just wanted to, I wanted to remember to say that, even if you do get coronavirus or COVID-19, um, it's, it's very likely that it will be a, um, a mild case, or if, if a child gets it. Um, so washing hands um, and not touching your face are very, very important. The next question that often comes up is, should I wear a mask? Should I make my child wear a mask? And the, the best answer that I can find is the following. If you or your child are immunosuppressed, in other words, if you are uh, taking medication that suppresses your immune system so that any cold that comes along, you, can, you have a much, much bigger chance, higher chance of getting it. Um, if you or your child are undergoing, you know, chemotherapy, something like that, that suppresses your immune system, um, you should wear a mask. And I actually have a friend who is in this situation and she's going to be traveling in, in March, later in March. And um, she was like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to wear a mask. And um, she said, maybe I will. She said something like, maybe I will uh, write a big sign on me that says, you know, I have to wear this because there's some etiquette around mask wearing. So. Um, in China, for example, I have read, uh, I understand that in China, it's common courtesy to wear a mask. Um, that it's very common for people to wear masks at this, particularly in, you know, in seasons where there is a lot of um, 
flu or colds kind of going around. And um, so people will wear masks so that others won't get what they have, but people will also wear masks to prevent to prevent the spread of disease, whether they have something or they're immunosuppressed or not. Here, um, it, I'm sorry, here in the US, uh, my understanding is that if you're wearing a mask, people are wondering, why are you wearing a mask? Why are you out? Like, why aren't you, you know, at home if you're so sick that you have to go out and wear a mask? Um, and so my friend was basically saying like, I think I'm gonna wear a sign that says this. And, and uh, what I had read is that's actually a really good idea. Tell people, I am immunosuppressed. You will not get what I have basically is, is, um, is what I've heard uh, is a good idea to say. Um, you know, or it, basically that's what, that's what I've, and I'm not making that recommendation for anyone, but um, my friend and I were kind of joking about like, maybe she should do this. And, and for all I know, maybe she will. I think so that people um, understand that like, it's not that you're too ill to be out. Um, it's that you don't want, if you get sick, it's, it's not a good scene <laughs> because of the way that your immune system is going, right? Um, so the question of a mask is a bit of a, a trickier question. Um, my, so we are traveling a little later this month and my first thought was, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get a mask and I'm gonna wear it. Cause last year um, traveling to my parents in Colorado um, to ski, one of my kids and I came home and we got off the plane and basically that next day we became just so sick with um, with a with a very very bad bug that um, that was like throw up other end. Um, I was also at the same time passing out from it. It was the most horrible uh, bug I've ever gotten hands down. And so at the beginning of the season, before I'd ever even heard of coronavirus, I was like, oh, I'm getting a mask and I'm wearing a mask. But it turns out that um, a mask you should only wear it if you are sick. Uh, so you should only put a mask on a child if they are sick. Or as I said before, if you've got an immunosuppression kind of um, deal going on, it won't really, a mask uh, won't prevent you from getting, I guess there are droplets that can penetrate most masks. But the other, but, but the thing that a mask could do is it could stop you from touching your face because every time you go to touch it, you feel that mask, right? So if, if, um, if you're feeling like, I think that's a, a reason to consider wearing a mask. Um, but other than that, people are basically saying like, it's not gonna help you not get sick uh, because you can still become exposed to those droplets that are in the air and, and that kind of thing. Um, so I, 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 I like to be able to say, hey, you know, here's the deal with something. And I like to be able to give a hard concrete, you know, recommendation but for that I really cannot I can I can wholeheartedly recommend washing your hands <laughs> right and and uh, working with kids to help them wash their hands um, and doing it that that way that is quote right where you are quote correct where you are um, you know you're singing the alphabet song or happy birthday you're using warm water you are um, using soap um, but I can't wholeheartedly recommend mask wearing in the same way. I think I'm gonna leave that up to you. <laughs> um, when I think about what I'm, what I'm an expert in, it is talking with kids about, um, about the situations that come up in their lives. And I actually wanted to share a situation that has come up in our lives. Now our kids are a lot older, but we still are thinking about how do we, how do we talk about the things that come up in our lives with kids. And I have been given permission to share about this. Um, so for the first time ever, I'm sharing that um, about an event that's happened in our lives. It's pretty seismic. Uh, my husband, Ben, the the 22-time uh, winner of the Husband of the Year Award, you hear his voice at the top of the podcast. Um, and he's our amazing producer, and he's so wonderful. I love him very, very much. Um, he was laid off from his job, his full-time job in uh, in late January. And um, we are good and stable right now, um, but we are, you know, when that happened, we we needed to uh, we needed to figure out not just how we were going to talk about it with our kids, but how we were going to think about it for ourselves. Because um, with everything, you, you can uh, you can look at something through a lens of oh, you know, we can, we were, and we do, you know, we have had moments of panic, right? We can think to ourselves like, oh my God, like, what are we going to do? How are we going to live? And um, we can sort of become overwhelmed with that, with that panic. And um, when we do, or when we have, what what's worked best is to 
remember that the antidote to anxiety is action and to sort of think positively. So what we've been able to do is frame this in a very positive way. Um, the golden handcuffs have come off for my husband. So he, uh, it's been a really good run where he worked. I mean, he, he was very lucky. He was there for 23 years. Um, he, he was lucky to work for a great company. Um, and, and it, it was very stable and good for us. Um, and now that it's ended, uh, he's able to look around and say, you know what? There were some things about this, my, you know, my adult life that I haven't loved. Um, and now is a really good chance to, to change that. Like we are at a turning point here. We're at kind of a crossroads. So, so it was funny just the Sunday before he got laid off, we had said uh, to each other, you know, what we'd really like is to um, relocate to someplace rural near a university rural, because that's what we um, most want. Like we just love um, woods and farmlands and forests and streams and, and lakes and mountains. I mean, that's always and forever since we've, since before we met, that's what we loved. Um, when we met, I was living in a place that was a lot like that. And Ben was living in Boston and we sort of went back and forth and it was wonderful, um, to, to, for him to be able to come out and, and be with me where I lived in this really beautiful rural place and uh, near a university because there's a certain energy to a place of learning that you just don't get anywhere else and um and you get a lot of interesting and in, you know arts and culture and um it just we basically we we said to ourselves the sunday before he was laid off you know what let's let's do let's do that like let's try to work towards that and i think we both envisioned that within the next whatever five years or something we would be we would be working towards that and then that wednesday he was laid off and um, and it's funny too, actually, I'll, I'm gonna go back a little further. So the Saturday night before he was laid off, we were visiting with friends and one of our friends who's about our age, you know, we've all got kids about the same age. One of our friends was sharing that one of their friends uh, didn't wake up one morning. And um, it, was, it, was, it was awful and sad for everyone involved, of course. And what it also did was make them, our friends that we were visiting with, um, look around and say, you know what, we're not going to be here forever. And what do we want? Like, how do we want to spend our time? Um, how do we want to spend our money? How do we want to be in the world? And so the next day when we were, Ben and I were having our, our weekly time together, um, it was like a walk that we usually take. And, um, that was when we started thinking like, what do we really want, um, in terms of our, our lives to be like, and, and, um, we agreed that we wanted to sort of relocate to somewhere rural near a university. And um, basically what we're doing now is, because then he got laid off, right? And what we're doing is we're taking steps to make that happen. We are planning to relocate somewhere rural near a university. And, um, and so when I think about, I wanted to share that with you because we've, while this has been happening, we've also been talking with our kids. Um, and I mean, right from the very get-go, right? We had to find what can we say that's going to, you know, not throw them into despair or worry or anxiety. Um, and so we had to realize within ourselves, we we needed to set aside our own anxieties and um, and present a positive, um, you know, a positive face on this uh, for our kids. And um, I would I would add to that when you're thinking of very young children, um, I would say probably any child would feel like this even into their teen years, but especially very young children are very what we call egocentric, which means that the world revolves around them. They they have no other frame of reference for that. They're not good at empathy yet, little kids. Um, and so events that happen, they're immediately thinking, how is this going to affect me? <laughs> and um, they cannot be blamed for that. That is that is where they live, right? They, they, they don't see from other perspectives particularly well. So in your planning, if you're going to talk to your kids or if you want to talk to your kids about coronavirus or, or you know, any issue that comes up, like, I, like I've been sharing about with my family, um, you want to try and make it so that you are um, understanding that they don't have another perspective to look at. So, so the job here is to communicate a sense of safety. You know, I will keep you safe. And if we, if we're, 
visibly panicked in front of our kids, it's very likely that they are also going to panic. So, um, so however we we are truly feeling about this, um, we need to set that aside when we're when we're talking to our kiddos about it. Um, reassure them, right? I will keep you safe. And um, I think most importantly is to address their questions. Like um, we could sit down in front of the kids and basically uh, say, okay, this is how many people it affects. This is uh, this is everybody's chance of you know of of dying. This is you know, we can come at them with graphs and charts, but we are, we're going to get fear and uncertainty and, and probably panic from them. Um, so uh, the best recommendation that I can come up with, and I, again, I've, this is corroborated by other educators that um, I've spoken with, is to wait until they ask questions um, and then answer their questions and don't try hard. I know how hard this is. Try not to go beyond that um, because they won't, they they will hear most what would they'll be able to understand most something in response to their question and um and even letting them pick the time so i'm thinking again of of mr rogers there's a really wonderful documentary about him um i'm gonna i don't remember the name of it but i'm gonna write mr rogers documentary and uh, i can't believe i don't remember the name. it might be called the good neighbor although that might be the book um and the movie might have a different name i can't remember but uh Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, I think as an adult, I can I, I can sort of tend to think of it as like, it's just for little kids. It's really um, not, uh, it's a little bit, well, I don't know what the word is. I guess I'll just say what it, what it really, what surprised me about watching that documentary was how very hard hitting Mr. Rogers' neighborhood was. They tackled the issues of the moment and um, they did it in a way that helped children through those problems because because our kids, um, while they may not be able to express it, they are they are in this culture, right? So they're they're hearing the things that are being said about coronavirus and 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 the stock market and the they're hearing things they don't even know what they mean. But they're hearing them in these hushed, frightened voices, and it's or they're hearing them, you know, because you can't go into a Dunkin' Donuts without somebody on the news yelling about, uh, you know, as you're waiting in line about how all the latest facts about coronavirus. Um, I find it very frustrating as an educator that we can't just have a a quiet time waiting in line, talking to the people in front of us or behind us, and just enjoying life. Instead, we have to hear about all the awful news of the day just my own personal frustration. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, if you don't share it, um, that's perfectly fine. Anyway, um, the reason I bring that up is because Mr. Rogers Neighborhood um, did an episode when uh, President Kennedy was, was, actually it wasn't President Kennedy, it was, it was his brother, it was Senator Kennedy was assassinated. And they had a, a, a human in the, in the, um, in the make, the neighborhood of make-believe, um, speaking, I think her name is Lady Averlin, speaking with a uh, Daniel Tiger with one of the one of the puppets. And um, they're talking about something that's completely different. And all of a sudden, uh, Daniel Tiger says, what's assassination? I'm going to try really hard not to tear up here. Um, and Lady Averlin says, I'm pretty sure it's Lady Averlin, says, um, she basically gives a really succinct, uh, you know, definition of it. And, and she says, um, she says something like, have you been hearing about that? Um, I'm not gonna remember it exactly. And, and, and Daniel Tiger says, yes. And and it sounds so sad or awful. And and uh, Lady Aberlin says, um, you know, I'm here to talk about it with whenever you want. And and um, and Daniel Tiger says, well, I don't wanna talk about it now. And, and Lady Aberlin says, okay, that's absolutely fine. We can talk about it whenever you want. And um, it's just so sweet and, uh, there's something about it that that makes you feel safe and supported. I, as a you know, forty-something adult watching it, I was like, "Oh, thank goodness for this little clip um, to help us through when when uh, Senator Kennedy was assassinated." And so, I want whenever we're thinking about talking to children, we we need to keep that in mind that um, we no matter what, we need to help them feel safe and let their questions be our guide. Um, there is a, a really great comic that I'm gonna, we're kind of wrapping up here, coming to the end of this. Um, there's a great comic that I wanted to direct your attention to, which is um, by Malaka Garib, uh, 
through NPR. Uh, this was a, um, there was an NPR report. And so uh, Malaka Garib did a comic for kids to help them sort of see what was, uh, you know, what all the, what the deal is with coronavirus and and what you can do about it and just answering a lot of questions that kids might have and talking about how um you know if somebody that you know gets sick you know that they're going to be able to get help from a doctor here are the things that you can do here's what they can do um it doesn't matter what somebody looks like or where they come from everybody has the same chance of being infected or you know or not with with coronavirus like um sneezing into your elbows is something that she talks about um it's just a great little comic and I'm going to link to it. I think it could be very helpful for you to read with your kids um, or, you know, to let them read on their own if they're old enough. Um, but it's, again, it's one of those positive things that can help you. It might elicit questions. It might answer questions that they didn't know they had had. And, um, and that's why I think you should, you should check it out. Uh, and finally, the last thing I want to say is just, um, I want to remember something else that Fred Rogers talked about a lot, which he, he, uh, the quote is, I believe, when I was a little boy and something, I would hear about something scary in the news, my mother would always say, look to the helpers. You'll always find the people who are helping. And um, that is what I would love for you to do. Um, if, if it feels like you've got a sniffle or your child is starting with a sniffle or a fever or you know that kind of dry cough that you can get either with the flu or with coronavirus, um, talk, call, a, call your doctor. You know. Um, Call, talk to the pediatrician and find out how, uh, you know, find out what they think you, that you should do. And, and if their recommendation is that you should, you know, stay home and keep them warm and, and make sure to wash hands and um, give them chicken soup <laughs> and all that good stuff, um, then definitely do that. But maybe they will say, you know, we'll come on in for a test or whatever. Um, the important thing is that, that we're, we're putting our, our trust in, in the, into the helpers. and um, and when we do that, our kids can feel safe because they will also know that that's, that's something that they can do. And um, yeah, so look to the helpers um, and, and also, I guess, be a helper for your child um, because the, the best thing that we can do are, is to, when we confront something like this, is to, is to, instead of panicking, sort of feel like, all right, I'm preparing, um, preparing, not panicking, as the Cool Mom Picks article says. Um, and and try to do your best. I know how hard this is, believe me, I know, to stay positive and um, to know that uh, difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. And um, we will get through this together, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's where I'm gonna leave it. I really wanna say thank you so much for watching, for listening. Um, and just to let you know, I'm Karen Locke Culp. Um, my website is weturnedoutok.com. And if you want to uh, head over there, you absolutely can. Also, the links are going to be right below this video. So whether you're watching uh, or listening from the website or in a podcast or uh, in, in YouTube, um, they'll be right there for you. And if I can do anything to help you, I would really love to. Um, my email is karen at weturnedoutok.com. That is O-K-A-Y is how I spell OK.com. Um, if you've got any questions about coronavirus or any other thing that your kids are doing that's driving you nuts, please uh, get in touch with me. Let me know. And I will be very, very happy to help. All right. Cheers. Thanks so much for watching. And we will um, talk to you soon. Bye.